Amen. Good morning. Good to see you here this morning. Well, not here. We've got a couple of people here to, to root me on. My wife is here and a couple other people, but uh, just uh, literally uh, just, just a handful. But uh, we're grateful that you're joining us online. Uh, we believe that this is something we will carry on even when we get back to normal in the future. We're going to have our services streaming so that uh, people who maybe aren't in the area or maybe uh, unable to attend church on a particular Sunday will be able to. So let's just begin with a word of prayer and then we'll move forward. So Father, we come before you today and, and right now, Lord, I just pray for all those you know scattered throughout the area in their homes, Lord God. Uh, I pray right now in Jesus name that that you would be with them there as you were with us here that Lord God that there there's no place neither height nor depth uh, nor any other place in all creation can keep us from your love and so I pray Lord as, as we go through this service that your love just permeates everything that we say and think and do we just give this morning to you right now in Jesus name just to let you know, we're, we're work in progress. Uh, we, in fact, we found a little bug in our streaming system yesterday, but we're unable to fix it this week. So if it's a little bit uh, uh, just uh, jittery or, or maybe not quite as clear as normal, I promise you by next week it will be crystal clear. But I pray that you can hear what we're saying. That's the most important part. And, and again, we're just grateful that you're a part of what we're doing here today. Um, what we want to do, church here at Reach Out. An important part of it is worship. And so I've been talking to uh, the worship leaders to see how we can do that. And so for this morning, uh, what we have is uh, Bucky Golden, who is our head worship leader, is going to be sharing a song that he wrote. And uh, we recorded this yesterday here in the sanctuary. And so we're just going to fade over to that. And, and I encourage you just to, it's a worship song talking about faith to just, uh, you know, you can watch, but, you know, close your eyes, let the words of the song soak into your very soul, and then we'll come back and move forward after that. God bless you. Good morning, everybody. You know, this song is a, a song the Lord gave me called Walk by Faith, and it strengthened me a lot. You know, we're to put our, our sights on him. You know, fix our eyes on the Lord, right? But it's true. You know, there's just this thing going in my head right now about my grandson when he lost his uh, parents. And even coming from that young kid, I talked to him about it, about the Lord how he felt about it and he said where else would I go you know there is really nowhere else to go but the Lord it's the only true sense of um, support so this song is about walking by faith not by sight come here to worship you Lord spirit and truth casting our cares at your feet we bring every doubt and every fear captive to you we put our trust in you our God Yes, we do. We walk by faith. We walk by faith in you, Lord. We are not alone. We fix our eyes on your heavenly throne. said to come boldly to you lord in our time of need to stand on your word and just receive we receive to know that you're right here with us that you'd never leave 
we keep our eyes on you, Lord, and not what we see. We walk by faith. We walk by faith in you, Lord. We are not alone. We fix our eyes on your heavenly throne. Trust in you, Lord. We are all we have. When the walls surround, when the waves abound, when I'm tossed around, I will trust in you. No matter what I feel, no matter what I see, no matter what may come, I will trust in you. When the walls surround, when the waves abound, when I'm tossed around, I will trust in you. No matter what I feel, no matter what I see, no matter what may come, I will trust in you. walk by faith and we walk by faith in you Lord we are not alone we fix our eyes on your heavenly throne strength is from you Lord We look to you, Lord. You give us the strength to stay the course. We will keep marching to our home, walking by faith in Christ alone. We will keep marching to our home, walking by faith in Jesus. We will keep marching to our home. We walk by faith. Walk by faith in you, Lord. We are not alone. We fix our eyes on your heavenly throne. Thank you, Lord. What a wonderful song. Thank you, Bucky, so much for sharing that with us. Uh, you know, with the situation, the circumstances that we're in right now, you know, as a church, we, we've been brainstorming and saying, you know, how can we still connect with all the different members of the church? And, and so uh, Aaron Bovey is our children's pastor, and so uh, we've been working at this during the week, and so Aaron has come up with, with a, a great idea. And so uh, we want to, as part of the announcements, have her share uh, what that new announcement is, all right? So we're just going to go to that now. Good morning. I'm so bummed we can't be meeting in person today, but I'm glad that we still have the ability to connect with one another over social media and with just the technology that we have today. So I wanted to bring attention to a few ways that we can do that even though we're not meeting in person. The first thing is that we have a Reach Out Kids Facebook group. So if you go onto our Reach Out page, you can find our group. And in that group, I'll be posting videos for our kids for Sunday morning, some resources for you as parents of 
what to do, how to do devotions with your kids, memory verses, different object lessons, ways for me to support you as parents and resource you since you'll be home with your kids for a while and just give you some fun things to do um, and point them in the direction of Jesus during this time. Also, if you as a parent need help with anything, maybe you need prayer, you're feeling overwhelmed, anything, you can reach out to me there on Facebook or you can email me um, or I'll give out my cell phone number on that page as well and you, you can contact me there and, and we can pray together and we can just talk and, and hang out a little bit. I miss seeing all of you, um, your kids and and you parents as well. And then the last thing I want to bring your attention to is that we have an Instagram. The church has an Instagram um, and Facebook. We have Spotify and our website. Those are all places that you can go to continue to connect with us over this period of time and this season. Um, even though we can't meet in person, we want to continue to connect with you. You are people and we want to love you and we want to be there and support you. So let us know how we can do that. Um, you can comment down below what social media outlet you like the best, what forms you like the best, and different things that you need so that we know how best to help you. Hopefully we'll be meeting again soon, but I don't think it'll be next week or anytime super soon. So in the meantime, this is where we are. This is our season, and we're going to glorify God together, and hopefully we'll be able to glorify God together in community over technology. <laughs> Have a good Sunday. Thanks so much, Aaron. Uh, just a couple other things we want to let you know about this week beginning, uh, we're not sure what day yet and we'll let you know in the form of an email and also through social media is our interactive prayer time and that's going to be taking place uh, in, our, in our prayer uh, room but the thing is you don't come here obviously we need to abide by the rules of the land but there'll be a couple of individuals here Sandra Forster my wife will be leading it and so it'll be much the same as what we're doing right here now it'll be streaming through YouTube and what will happen is that you can actually send your prayer request and in fact even now you can comment on the service on what's going on and in fact if you have prayer requests uh, that you'd like prayer for we will look at all those requests at the end of the service and we will pray for you but we won't be doing it live today but the prayer time the interactive prayer time they will be doing that in other words they'll be praying for for you know for the church for members of the church for, for the country the the community the world for that matter and just all the things related to that but as well as you can send in your personal prayer request and they will pray right there with you you know you set you send the request in and you type it in and and then they can pray for it right there and then you know it is spiritually holding on to you know hopefully dozens of other people's hands praying together for that specific concern and you know we've had already reports of people who have been laid off from their jobs and and different things are going on financial difficulties as a result of what's going on and we want to pray with you we want to make sure that you know that you are not alone that not only is God with you but we're with you as well and that's really really important to us so we'll send out an email and put it out on social media when that evening is going to happen I suspect it'll be probably like a seven o'clock in the evening type thing for maybe an hour or something like that and we'll give you those details in the upcoming day or two, all right? Uh, the, the next uh, announcement, obviously, uh, during this time often, we receive our church tithes and offerings. Just want to let you know that the church, though you're not here and we're not able to be with you physically, the church is still carrying on in ministry, that our missionaries are still serving around the world. They're still doing their thing and sharing the gospel. Obviously, they're limited and doing it in, in creative ways, just as we're doing it here right now. Our food pantry is still carrying on right now. The government government has mandated that as a necessity. In fact, uh, we minister to a lot of people who don't regularly come to our food pantry and through the week we receive dozens and dozens of calls of new people in need and we we're able to minister to them uh, with food and, and with prayer. And We're going to talk a little more next week about how we're doing that and uh, to show that uh, the kingdom of God is still advancing even though we have this thing going on right now. Nothing can stop the kingdom of God. In fact, the word of God says this, that the kingdom of God is forcefully advancing and forceful people lay hold of it. And that just means that, that we don't give up as believers. We still persevere and move forward even in the midst of adversity. And so if you'd like to give, there's you know several different ways and, and we talk about this on a weekly basis. You can give online through our church website, reachoutchurch.com, I think forward slash give. Uh, and you'll see a little donate button there and you can just click and, and give that way. You can mail a check in, of course. Uh, it, 
however you want to support the work of the ministry, you're welcome to do so. Uh, again, this, this primarily is for, for members of our church, people who call Reach Out Home. So if you're a visitor listening, please don't feel any obligation or compulsion. Uh, we're just letting our people know uh, the different ways that they can give. And so let's just take a minute and we just pray concerning finances and then we'll, we'll move forward. Father, I just thank you for every person that calls Reach Out Their Home. And, and Lord God, we, we count them dear to us as, as they count us dear to them. And, and so we speak a blessing over them, Lord God, that every financial need will be met both in their lives, Lord, and in the church's life. Lord God, we thank you that you have never failed us and you will never fail us into the future, no matter what the adversity is in our lives. We thank you that, that you are our constant. You are like our North Star in our ever-changing world. You're always there. And so we give you the honor and the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, I want to take a minute and give you some good news. Uh, we have two new members of Reach Out. Uh, they are small members, but they are nevertheless just as important as any other members. So the first one, uh, proud parents, uh, Leah and Michael, uh, we have little Grace. And she is 19 inches long, coming in at 6 pounds and 8 ounces. God bless you, Grace. And then we have another baby. This is amazing. Two babies. Uh, Erica and Jeremy's uh, daughter, Juniper. And she comes in at 18.5 uh, uh, inch, inches and 7 pounds, 12 ounces. I, I, it sounds like I'm announcing a fight, right? You know, you have your different wrestlers come in at different weights and they're going to battle it out. But I, I don't think these two young ladies are going to be fighting any time soon. In fact, I pray they never do. But uh, what a blessing. You know, it's, it's just neat to be reminded that life carries on even when there's difficulties around us. And, and we need to embrace that. We need to say, Lord, we're trusting you. And we need to carry on with life. We, we don't want to become hermits. In a sense, uh, because of the different regulations, it's like we are hermits, right? We're, we're, we're to shelter, you know, where we are kind of thing. But that doesn't mean that spiritually we have to do that. We still have ways to pick up our phones and ways to communicate with those around us to encourage them in the Lord. So let's just be a light in this world. But God bless those, those little girls and just keep the parents in prayer as, as they uh, just encourage their, the little lives that have come into their life. Amen. Good stuff. Okay. I've been praying, obviously, over the last number of weeks concerning messages. In fact, that's always been my heart. You know, I, I pray and pray and pray. I don't just come up with ideas. I don't just see something online and think, hey, that's a great idea, or read a book and think that's a great idea. But I truly Go to God and say, Lord, what is it that you want to say? And so I want to begin with a word of prayer, and then we're going to get into the message this morning. And, and hopefully it will be uplifting and encouraging to you. So Father, right now, in Jesus' name, we come before you. And, and Lord, we're scattered throughout the area, throughout Hyde Park and, and Red Hook and Poughkeepsie and Wappingers Falls and, and Millbrook and Stanfordville and, and across the river, Lord God, and, uh, New Paltz area, Highland. You know, we're scattered all over. Plus, there's probably some watching even from other countries right now. And Lord, wherever they are, you're there. And so I pray that they would have a sense of your presence, just as we have a sense of your presence right here and right now with us. So I pray, Lord, that as we share the word, that uh, we would grow in our understanding of you and grow in faith, just as Bucky was singing, that we walk by faith and not by sight. So just bless our time together as we look to your scriptures. In Jesus' name, amen. We've been talking here in church for the last number of weeks uh, over a series called The Journey. And it really talks about how the children of Israel left Egypt and were heading to the promised land. And they could have done it in less than a month's time if they just went straight there. But, but they couldn't for a variety of reasons. And we're not going to talk about that today. In fact, you can go online to our church website and be able to look at the uh, recent audios of that series if you'd like to see more detail on that. But over the last number of weeks, we, we, we see the children of Israel got to the edge of the promised land. Literally on the edge. And hadn't gone into the promises yet. Hadn't got to the promised land. And that's, for us, it's talking not about a physical place, 
But the promises that God has given us, maybe concerning relationships, concerning our walk with Him, concerning uh, maybe job situations and financial things, that, that's a part of our promised land, the promises that God has given us. And so now we're just at the edge where we're going to cross into the promised land. And here's the thing. I believe that this speaks a lot to what's going on in our lives today because here they are, the children of Israel, are going to go to a place they've never been before. It's all foreign to them. They've never experienced it before. How much is that our situation here today? In a sense, here we are as a nation, as a world, stepping into something that, that as a world we've never done before with, with the closures and the different things going on. I've never experienced anything like this. And I think for most of us, we haven't. The closest probably was 9-11 uh, when it happened. But it was kind of like a, a jab. And then within a week or two, it basically subsided. People could still go about their business. This isn't like that. This is a, an ongoing thing that will go on for at least a number of weeks. And, and so it's quite different than anything we've experienced. But I believe that God is in the midst of this. Now I'm going to say this and this is, can be put on the record right now. God did not cause this. This is not the judgment of God or anything like that at all. This is called life. And Jesus himself said you will have difficulties in this life. But be of good cheer. I am with you. And so that's how we need to look at this. God didn't cause this, but God will help you to walk through this and come out the other side. And it's his heart that you and I come out better than how we went into it. And that's my word of encouragement to you right now. But if you have your Bibles, if you'll turn to the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 1. And in Joshua chapter 1, we're going to be reading just a couple of verses. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Uh, obviously, uh, we're going to put, the, well not obviously, but we're going to put the words up on the screen so you can see them as, as I share from the word. So uh, Joshua 1 beginning at verse 1. So after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness and, and uh, sorry, from the wilderness and this Lebanon as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea, going Toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Verse 6. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You know, as I, I look at this scripture, man, I, I see God speaking to us today. In fact, the title of today's sermon is, is Walls and Waves. We're going to be talking about walls and waves. And in a sense, here, here is God speaking to Joshua saying, look, it, it's, it's not going to be easy. And you know why we know it's not going to be easy? Because three times God says, look, it, uh, be strong and of good courage. Three times he says that. Man, that's, that's really reiterating something, isn't it? When God himself says that. So obviously Joshua was dealing with some fear, some intrepidation. He, he wasn't sure what the future held, but here's God promising that it's going to be okay. And so as we look at this portion of scripture, we see a couple of things. We see that, that Joshua is the new man on the job. Though he had been an understudy of Moses for the last 40 years in the wilderness, he now has taken over. Moses has passed away. So Joshua is rising up to the call and God says, you're the man. 
I want to say to you today that, that you are the man, that you are the woman, that, that you are the person that God has called to be a leader right now. And it may be of your family, it may be a, a, of your job, it might be spiritually just leading others to help them in their walk with God, or, or maybe they're not even walking with God yet. But you're called to rise up and be strong and of good courage. That's God's heart for you and I today. Not to huddle down and, and act in fear and dismay like the rest of the world. That's not what God's called you and I to do, but to rise up and be strong in him and be courageous in him. Why? And we can look back and see this in verse 5. It says this at the very end of verse 5. I will not leave you nor forsake you. It doesn't matter about pestilences and famines and sickness and wars, all those things. That doesn't matter to God in this fact that he will never leave you or nor, nor forsake you. He will be there no matter what. And for we as God's children, we need to realize that, remind ourselves about that, encourage ourselves about that, and walk in it. Because the Lord even said this to Joshua, that wherever the tread of your foot, the sole of your foot goes, you will conquer. That means that you and I can't just stand stagnant, can't just be static in our relationship and our walk with him because then we're not going to grow, we're not going to conquer territory, spiritually speaking. We've got to move forward, we've got to take those steps of faith and believe that God is with us and he will not leave us nor forsake us. And so though we may physically not be able to move a whole lot, in a sense here we are confined to our homes and, and only able to go out for certain things, I get all that. Spiritually, we can take steps of faith. Spiritually, we can encourage our families. Spiritually, we can encourage our neighbors and, and co-workers and, and maybe extended family members and friends that aren't, aren't with us, but, but through phone and through internet and prayerfully praying for them. There's other ways that we can step forward and conquer territory. And so this isn't a time to shrink back, church. This isn't a time to shrink back in any way, but to push forward in what God has called you and me to do. And for Joshua, he was scared. He didn't know what the future held really. He wasn't sure. He knew that the enemy was in the land that flowed with milk and honey. That the enemy was where his promises were. It's the same for you and I today. The enemy is in the land of our promises. In other words, the enemy, Satan, wants to hold you and I back from what God has for us. And so we have to choose to move forward still. And thank God Joshua does this. But he does it prayerfully. And let me show you what I mean by that. If you turn to Joshua chapter 5... Just a couple of pages over. Now, before we get to that, let me, let me let you know about some background information. Joshua sends a couple of spies to go check out the land. If you remember, that happened before. Moses sent 12 spies 40 years before. And those 12 came back, 10 with a negative report, two with a positive report. It's interesting that Joshua sends only two this time. <laughs> he didn't want the 10 and the negative report. He just sends the two for a positive report. And I, I believe there's some truth in that. And I'm sure they were handpicked. And it wasn't to go and see whether they should go and conquer the land. It was to spy out the land in how they were going to conquer it. And it's the same for you and I. We need to spy out our promised land to see how God wants us to attain to his promises. There's a method and a way to do it. You can't just do things your own way. If you want what God has for you in your life, you've got to do it his way and his way alone. And so he sends the two spies in and, and they come back and say, look at everybody is scared. They're fearful of the children of Israel. And that was quite different than 40 years before because the people didn't seem to be afraid. But now they are afraid. And so here we, we move forward with this. And, and so they cross the Jordan River. When the, when the two spies come back and report, Joshua says, okay, it's time. We're going to cross over into the promised land. And so... If you've been following with us, we read several weeks ago about how when, when Moses crossed the Red Sea, he put his staff up and, and, and the sea separated and they walked across on dry land. What an awesome picture that would be. And so here we have 40 years later, the same kind of scenario. Joshua comes down near the water and he has the priest go ahead of him carrying the Ark of the Covenant. And that contained a, a jar of manna. It contained uh, some other things. But most of all, it contained the Ten Commandments. It represented the covenant covenant that the children of Israel had with God. And so literally, he says, you guys go and you stand in the middle of the river with the with Ark of the Covenant. And so there they are. And at that point, the waters part and the children of Israel can cross on dry land, just like they did across the Red Sea 40 years before. And they cross over into the promised land and they, and they camp there. 
And according to all my reading, they're about six miles, give or take, from Jericho. They could probably see it on the horizon because it was a huge walled city. It had huge walls, impenetrable. In fact, it was sealed up solid. There was no way in the natural that Joshua could conquer Jericho. And Jericho, in a sense represented the key way to the rest of the country. If they couldn't defeat Jericho, they couldn't move forward to conquer the rest of the land. For you and I, there are keys in our lives, keys to all the rest of the promises. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit later in, in, in what we're talking about here. But let's pick up the story. Joshua goes by himself to just check out Jericho. And that's where we are right now in, in the account. So Joshua 5, beginning at verse 13. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted his eyes and looked. And behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? So he said, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandals off your foot, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. So as we look at this account, here's Joshua. It says that he looked up. So you get the idea that, that he maybe he was kneeling in prayer. We don't know, but he, his eyes were looking down. And, and I believe he was in meditation. He was in prayer to the Lord saying, God, what, you know, what am I going to do here? And he lifts up his eyes and he sees this, this person, this, this being with a sword drawn. Now I can tell you right now that I suspect that Joshua just didn't stand there. I suspect that Joshua pulled his sword out as well. And then he says, hey look at are you, are you for me? Are you for my adversaries? Are you for Jericho and the inhabitants in this land? Or are you for me who are representing God? And it's interesting the answer that that individual gives. He says no. <laughs> he says no. I'm not for either. And then he says, but as commander of the Lord of hosts, I come. Now it's interesting, how does Joshua respond to that? He hits the deck, doesn't he? He just goes down, you know, falls to the ground and says, what do you want me to do? Do you know why he did that? He recognized who that person was. That person represented the kingdom of God, represented the armies, the supernatural armies of God. There's some theologians who would say that it was a pre-incarnate Jesus because we see in the book of Revelations that it talks about Jesus being the commander of the Lord of hosts. And I have no, no issue with that. I think it was Jesus showing up there at that time. But regardless of, of that, that, that person, and let's just say it's Jesus, but that person was representing the kingdom of God, the supernatural armies. And so Joshua, what did he do? Immediately, Fell to the ground and said, what do you want me to do? And it's interesting. Here's what the commander said. Take off your sandals. You're on holy ground. Now what's interesting about this, this isn't the first time that we've heard this account like this. In fact, some 40 years before, we can read it in, in, in uh, Exodus chapter 3, where, where Moses sees a burning bush. This is before he was leading the children of Israel. He was just a shepherd out in the wilderness. He sees this burning bush, and, and he goes, and, and he says, I'm going to check this thing out. And as he gets closer, he sees that the bush is burning, but isn't consumed. And a voice comes out of that bush and says, take off your sandals, this is holy ground. The same words exactly. And we know that that was the voice of God at that time. So that's why I have to believe that this was the Lord again showing up at Jericho to talk to Joshua. And so Joshua, you know, does what's right. He bows his knee. What, what is that? He, he's submitting to the one that's above him. Seeing that though Joshua is the commander of, uh, of literally a million plus people, he recognizes that God is above him. And this is really important because when Joshua challenged him and said, are you for me or for the adversaries? When, when the Lord responded by saying no, what he was really saying is, look it, I don't follow you. You follow me. And this is so true for us today. So often, especially in a Western mentality, you and I, and I'm as guilty as anyone, anyone listening. I'm as guilty. Man, I got a plan. I want to do things a certain way. I, I, I want to do this. And here's what I want. God, I want you to partner with me to do what I want to do. And God, you know what God's answer is to that? No. 
Just like it was to Joshua. In other words, God is not supporting our agenda. We're called to support his agenda. Now having said that, it doesn't mean that we miss out. You know, so often uh, Christians are kind of mocked about that. Well, you know, as a Christian, you can't do what you want to do. No, but we can do things that we couldn't do before, which are better and more fun and more fulfilling than we could ever do with our own agenda. But the enemy will try to deceive us and trick us into saying, no, what you want to do is better than what God has for you. That is a lie. And if you want to have supernatural victory in your life, you've got to do it God's way. And how do we follow God's way? Is on our knees. Taking our sandals off, which in that day was a sign of servanthood. In other words, the servants in a household didn't wear shoes. They were barefoot. And that was just a sign that they were a servant. And so when they took it, when Joshua, when Moses took their shoes off, it was showing that they were servants to the Lord Most High. So let me ask you this question today. Are you a servant of God? That when you're confronted with difficulties, do you take the sword in your own hand and, and, and just go and do what you want to do, what you think is best? Or instead of that, do you say, Lord, I need your help. Show me what to do. And, and get direction, get insight from him so that you can conquer the land. You see, Joshua knew that he couldn't overcome that walled city. That wall was impenetrable. Now, we're not going to talk about the story today other than to say this, that, that God gave some really strange instructions. He said basically for six days they were to march around and not say a word. Just march around the wall once a day for six days. And then on the seventh day they were to march around seven times. And at the end of that they were to shout with a, a huge shout. And when they did that, the walls didn't fall over. They literally fell down. And the Israelites were able to go in and conquer Jericho just like that, miraculously. Because it would have been impossible in the natural. But with God, it says this in, in Romans 8.31, with God, all things are possible. And that's how we need to walk as believers, knowing that God is wanting to work in a supernatural way in our lives. But we have to follow his program to do it. We have to do what he's called us to do. Even to do bizarre things like, you know, here, here's Joshua marching around, nobody talking, you know, for six days and the seventh day going around seven times and then shouting. You know, how does that formula work? You know, in the natural, it makes no sense at all. But God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. But the Bible says that we can have the mind of Christ. And though he doesn't think and act like we do, we can still connect with him and find out what he wants us to do. And when we do it, supernatural things happen. In fact, look at the scriptures as we look all through the New Testament. When the disciples of Jesus, those who were following Jesus, did what he told them, miracles followed them everywhere they went. I want to tell you that God is still in the miracle business today. Regardless of what's going on in the natural world, God is still in the business of doing miracles right here and right now. Right where you're seated sit right now. Uh, you, may have, you may be in your pajamas. Do you know that if you've got a health ailment, God can heal you right there. You know what I'm saying? You know, it, 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 you know sometimes we think we've got to be dressed up to approach God. That somehow we have to be in a certain place. Where, listen, God is right where you are right now. Glory of the Lord covers the earth as the waters cover the sea. His presence is right here, right now. Just take a deep breath and just say, Lord, I just soak you in. Just believing that he's right there for you, to minister to you, to deal with any health, physical health concerns, to deal with emotional turmoil that's going on right now. For some of you, there's a lot of emotional turmoil. Let Jesus shoulder that. You don't have to. Let him carry it for you. And so in the case of this wall... God made a way to get through the wall. You have some obstacles in your life possibly. God wants to help you overcome the obstacles that are in your life. That's just the nature and character of who he is. He wants to bring the walls down that are in your life. And we're going to talk about what some of those walls might be in, in a few moments. But right now, I, I want to change gears and I want to talk about some waves. So we've talked about walls. We're going to, we'll circle around to that in a few minutes. But I want to talk about the waves that happen in our lives. And you're going to see how this all connects. But we need to go to the New Testament for that. And if you go to Mark chapter 4, there's about five or six verses there that I'd like to take a look at this morning. And you'll see how this all connects in a few moments. So Mark chapter 4, beginning at verse 35. Jesus is with his disciples at this time. He's on the earth physically. And so he's with his disciples and he begins to speak to them in Mark 4, verse 35. On the same day, 
When evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats also were with him. Verse 37, And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he arose and rebuked the winds and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? So just to give you a little bit of background to see how this story connects both geographically as well as spiritually, the, the Sea of Galilee is actually a part of the Jordan River. The Jordan River begins in Mount Hermon, which is up in the northern part of Israel, and it flows down, and then it runs into the Sea of Galilee, and then the Jordan River comes out of the Sea of Galilee and flows all the way down, about 100 plus miles, down into the Dead Sea. And so... This is interesting, isn't it? Here we have the account in the Old Testament of Joshua crossing the Jordan River to get to the Promised Land. And here we have Jesus crossing the Sea of Galilee, which was part of the Jordan River, to get to another part, to get to the other side of the, the country. And so I believe that there's a connection here in that when we cross into our promised land, there's going to be adversity. And in this case, this windstorm rises up. And here's the thing. Most of the disciples were fishermen. In other words, they lived on the sea. They knew what normal storms were. And, and they've weathered all kinds of storms over the years. They knew that this was a bad one. So much so, it was filling the boat. And they were fearful of drowning. Seasoned fishermen, afraid of drowning. This must have been a tempest of a windstorm. And yet, here we see Jesus. What's he doing? Is he all fretting about it? Is he all worried about it? Is he concerned about it? He's asleep on a pillow in the back of the boat. Total peace, even though this chaos is going on around. Now here's the question that I, I, I want to ask you right now. Though he was peaceful, does that mean he didn't care? Because sometimes as we, as we look around and, and we've got chaos going on, we've got sickness going on, we've got different things going on, sometimes we say this, God, where are you? Don't you care? Why don't you do something? Well, here's the thing. God's doing something is often different than us doing something. You know, for us, we just want to, uh, again, intervene and do what we think is best. But God sometimes has other plans. And so in this case, there was a purpose in this. The storm came. Jesus, in fact, had instructed the disciples to get into the boat to go to the other side. Now, if Jesus was all-knowing, and we know that he was, he knew the storm was going to happen. And yet here he is sleeping in the boat. So his disciples wake him up and say, hey, Jesus, we're, we're all going to die. You know, essentially saying, don't you care? And how does Jesus respond? Stands up, and he speaks to the wind and the waves. And he says, be still, peace. I wonder whether at times you and I get so wrapped up emotionally in, in the event of what's going on in our lives, whether it be this coronavirus or, or other things going on in our lives, that we can't focus on the strength that Jesus has given us. And instead of worrying about that chaos in our lives, worrying about that sickness, worrying about that relationship, worrying about the finances, to speak to it in the name of Jesus. To say, peace, be still. One of the things that I do on a regular basis, you know, I... I'm, I'm a thinker. In other words, as, as I've got situations here at the church and life going on, my mind rolls. Some of you know what I'm talking about because you, you have the same issue where, where you lay down at night, you, you, your brain just keeps going. And sometimes you just lay there, God, you know, and, and just thinking and thinking and thinking and, and, and you try to put your mind to sleep. And a number of years ago, God spoke to me and said, why don't you speak to your mind? I didn't really know what he meant, but then I was reminded of this account in, in the chaos of the storm and, and how what happened was there was a speaking to that storm. So what I began to do on a regular basis when I go to bed every night now, I say, peace, be still to my mind. And you know what happens? Literally, my mind just settles down and within moments, I'm asleep. It's the most amazing thing. We need to start speaking to our circumstances in the name of Jesus. 
You need to start speaking to the fear that's going on in your life right now. You need to, uh, the chaos that's going on right now around your life, you need to start speaking peace to it. Family members speaking peace to it. That doesn't mean that we don't act. You know, you can speak to it, but then we act and do what we need to do to bring peace to that circumstance. But it begins with speaking. It actually begins with believing and then speaking it. Because Jesus knew that if he spoke it, it would come to pass. And in fact, you read the account, immediately everything went to calm. So much so that the disciples said that, hey, you know, right at the very end, and they feared exceedingly and said to one another, verse 41, who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? You see, each one of us, each one of us have walls in our life. We've got impenetrable obstacles that are just holding us back. And we also have waves in our life that we're on top of. That's, that's the emotions of life, the chaos of, of what's going on. And we're being tossed all over the place by, by these waves of adversity. But God has a plan to deal with both, whether it be a wall or a wave, or walls and waves, if you've got a lot of things going on. And so that brings me to the point of circling back to the book of Joshua. But before I do that, what does Jesus say here? In verse 40, he says, but he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And so here we have something going on here. Jesus actually allowed this to happen in their life so that that fear would rise up, so they would see that they had the fear, so that faith could also rise up. And I believe that that's what God wants to do in your life and in my life through this circumstance. Though there is a spirit of fear all around the world right now, that God can work all things for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. That's what the scripture says in the book of Romans, Romans 8, 28. And so here we are at this place where, where fear is, is prevalent all around us and for some of us even, even on us. And God is asking us to rise up in faith. How can we do that? And I want to leave you with three simple points directly from Scripture, directly from Joshua, where God spoke to Joshua as a leader. I'm speaking to each and every one of you as leaders here this morning. Again, leaders over yourself, leaders over your family, leaders over your household, leaders in your area, maybe your community, your neighborhood, where other people are wondering, God, what's going on? Listen, you and I have the inside track. God has a plan to come out the other side. And God wants you to be a light in this darkness. And so how can we rise up in faith? And so we have three simple points. You need to go back to Joshua chapter 1. And we've got them right here. And then we're going to finish up here this morning. So in Joshua chapter 1, we, we see in verse 5, he says, I won't leave you nor forsake you. But we're going to pick this up in verse 6. And I've highlighted some things. All right. So look at verse 6. Here's the first point that God says. He says, be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. So just look at that scripture for a minute. I highlighted be strong and of good courage because we're going to see that three times. And here's the thing. I put it in red. And I did that for this because you and I are part of a blood covenant. Jesus died on the cross of Calvary and shed his blood that you and I can have assurance from God. And so that's why, here's God speaking, so I made it red, just to represent we're in relationship with him. But here's what I want you to see. He says, be strong and of good courage. Why? Because there's an inheritance. Now here's the thing. If this was the end of the world right now, where's the inheritance? The point is, it's not the end. God's got plans for your future and my future of an inheritance. That means that there is a future that's solid and steadfast for you and I. And so we need to see that. So that's point one. I would just want you to see that. There's an inheritance in the promised land for you and I. And it's not a physical place, but spiritually speaking, he wants to give you peace and, and joy and, and all the things of the Spirit to just give you a place of tranquility in the midst of the chaos. Even though you might feel like you're that boat right now and the wind and the waves are pounding against you, that you can rise up and say, no, I am going to be strong and of good courage and I'm going to say, peace, be still, and I'm going to calm myself in the name of Jesus. Again, you can do this. I'm confident that you can do it. But as we look on, uh, let's look on to the next verse at seven, 7 and 8. He says again, only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn to the right or to the left that you may prosper whatever you do, wherever, wherever you go. Verse 8, 
this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So, let's look at this. First of all, he says the same thing right in verse 7. Be strong and courageous. All right, there it is. And then he talks about the book of the law. So go, go to verse 8 if you could. So if you have a look at verse 8, he talks about the book of the law. Well, for us, that's our Bible. All right, the book of the law was essentially the first uh, five books of the Bible that they had at that time. Well, now we've got the entire Bible. So basically, here's what we're to do, right? Meditate on the Bible day and night. Observe to do all <clears throat> that is according that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. When you translate that bottom section, it says you will have a good journey in this life. So in other words, when we allow ourselves to be strong and courageous, to rise up in faith with God, we will have a good journey in this life. And so this is important for you and I to realize. First of all, let's review again. We have an inheritance, right? That's the first thing. If we're strong and courageous. We have an inheritance that God has for us. And then second, as we look at this, we will be prosperous, have good success. We're going to have a good journey in life. That is God's heart for you and I. That's God's heart for you and I, and we need to hold on to that. All right, let's move on to the third and final point. He says now in, in, in verse 9, it says, Be strong and of good courage. To you, uh, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So again, as we look at this last verse, be strong and of good courage. Why? So that we won't be afraid and dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Reminds me back to the verse 5 where it says, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. And so you and I can be steadfast in the Lord. That though we're going into unknown territory, we're, we're treading in areas that you and I have never experienced before as far as what's going on in our world right now. God is there. He's with you and I. He wants to help us in this world. And not only help us, but to actually see us get victories, to grow bigger and stronger in him. That is God's heart for you and I. And so I hope that you've been encouraged by this message and, and, and believe that God is with you and for you. And I encourage you to talk to God about this. You know, we're, we're big about that, that God wants to have a personal relationship with you. And in fact, if you're listening and, and you're hearing all this and you're thinking, well, th this is all very interesting, let me, let me give you something that's really, really important. The most important thing of all. You can't have the promises of God until you know Him personally as Lord and Savior. And so right now, if you've never asked, right where you are in your house, where, where in your car, where, wherever you might be, you know, where, where you're streaming this right now, or you're watching it later as, as a recorded video on YouTube, right where you are right now, here's what I want you to know. God loves you. In fact, the Bible says this, that he's irrespective of person. And that doesn't mean he doesn't care about people. What it means is he treats everyone the same. And the Bible says this, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And so we've been talking about faith today. Jesus was challenging the disciples in the boat. Where's your faith? Because their world was being rocked, literally. Our world is being rocked right here and right now. And what I'm telling you is that you can have security, that you can have eternal life, guaranteed. That regardless of what happens in this world, that you will go on into eternity and be able to walk with Jesus and have peace in your heart. And so if you're in that place that you've never asked Jesus into your heart, you can do this right now. Just take a minute and close your eyes and just pray this prayer with me. Just repeat the words I'm, I'm going to say. If you believe the words that I'm saying, just, just repeat them. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you right now and I know I'm not perfect. I know I have missed the mark of perfection. The Bible says that only perfect people can get to heaven. That means I need help. And so right now, I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my heart as Lord and Savior. 
I give my life to you right now. And I pray from this point going forward that you will guide me and direct me from this life into the next. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you now have become what the Bible says, born again, born above, born of the Spirit. You now have a relationship with Jesus. And just like meeting a new friend at school or at work or, or just in your community, you need to develop that relationship. So I encourage you to talk to God regularly on a daily basis. Uh, if you need a Bible, we're happy to mail you one, get you a Bible. Uh, there's some good online Bibles as well, but we're happy to mail you a physical one. You just let us know and we will be happy to talk to you and encourage you in, in your walk with the Lord and also give you some other materials that you could study at home and be encouraged as well. What I want to do right now, though, is as we close out, I want to just take a few minutes and, and just pray. And so I would ask all of you to, to join with me in prayer just as we, we pray for, for people and community and, and for the world. And so let's just do this together. Father, we come before you and, and Lord, there's just a lot of chaos around us. There's a lot of uncertainty around us. There's a lot of fear around us. But Lord God, you've called us to be people of faith. And so I pray right now in Jesus' name that, that we would be reminded of that. Maybe through this message and, and just through our time of talking with you right now. That, that we would just be reminded that you are on your throne. And that you are God alone. And just as, as Joshua submitted to your leadership all those thousands of years ago. We submit to your leadership right now. And we pray for your protection, for your covering. We thank you, Lord, that, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every word that rises up against us shall not come to pass. And so, Father, right now in Jesus' name, we pray that concerning sicknesses and disease. That, Lord God, that we could be strong in faith and trust you. Not be foolish in any way, Lord God, but doing the things we need to do because your word says to obey the king and, and the leaders over us. And so, so we're just obeying the, those who are over top of us, Lord God, and submitting to that. But Lord God, we're not doing it out of fear. We're just doing it because your word says that we should do that. But we're going to live in faith and walk by faith and, and not by sight. We're going to trust you. We pray for those that are, have families that maybe someone has passed away. And Lord, we just pray for your peace to be with them. Lord, we pray right now in Jesus' name that you would, your presence would just be there with them and uphold them. That Lord God, that they could have hope in you. Lord God, we pray for other nations right now. Some are, are far, in far worse condition than we are, Lord God. And we just pray again that, that whether it be through YouTube videos or, or however you want to do it, Lord God, that they could hear the good news of Jesus. And hear that there is hope for the future. That this is not the end. Yes, things will not be the same coming out the other side. But Lord God, you still have a plan. Your kingdom is still forcefully advancing. And so Lord, I thank you that we are, are part of that forceful group. That, that are not going to cower in fear. But are going to rise up in faith. And do what we've been called to do. So Lord, I lift up those nations. I lift up the leaders of the nations. The Lord God, that they would take the appropriate actions to protect the people that's under their care. And Lord God, most of all, we just lift up you and we thank you that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. And though we don't understand why some of these things happen, we trust you. And we acknowledge you as our leader, as our king, as our friend in our time of need. And so, Lord, during this period of time, I pray that we have a greater sense of your presence than ever before. That though the enemy would, would wish to push us away from you, here we are not being able to meet together in church. That, that Though the enemy is trying to do this, that we would draw closer together in the Spirit. More connected than ever. Because that which was meant for evil, the Word of God says, you will turn to good. And so we see this entire thing, this entire event that's happening around us turning to good in the name of Jesus. We don't know how you're going to do it, but we pray right now for souls to come to know you. We pray that those who are, who are maybe weak in faith would grow stronger in their faith. The Lord God, that your perfect will would be done. 
And Lord, again, I lift up those who are dealing with walls in their lives, impenetrable obstacles, whether that be in the area of, of finances or relationships or jobs, that, that, that it's impossible to get to the other side. That Lord God, as they spend time talking to you, that you would show them ways for those walls to come down. That you would bring a solution to each one of those circumstances. And for those right now, Lord, that are dealing with waves in their lives, Lord God, the emotion of life being tossed to and fro right now, they just feel like they're, they're, they're just being swamped. That, Father, right now, that they could speak to the wind and the waves and say, peace be still, and see a great calm happen, and be able to recognize that you're doing a miracle in their lives. So, Father, right now, we just commit all of this to you, you are faithful and true. And though in a few moments we'll be signing off, you never sign off from any one of us. You're there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days of the year. You're always there for us. And so we just give our lives to you. We thank you. We praise your name in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen, amen. God bless you this morning. I pray that we've been able to encourage you. And again, uh, watch for our, our interactive prayer that's going to happen. Also, we'll again send out an email, let you know what's going on. And, and uh, text as well. If you signed up for texting, you will get text as well. So if you'd like to get texting and you didn't know about that, if you give us your uh, information, on, uh, we will connect with you any way we can. So God bless you this morning. Keep walking with Jesus. Amen. <laughs>